Welcome to another week of worship. We are happy that you chose New Mount Zion. Some of you may be looking for a church home, a place to find friendship, visiting with your family, a place to serve, looking to know Christ better, seeking to understand where you fit into God's plan for mankind. Or you may not be sure of exactly what you are looking for. Whatever the reason, we hope this message is a blessing to you. Your year by just 
is changing your habits. Can you get a witness? But watch this. See, it's, 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 see because it's all in the work of God. God designed the brain with what we what we tag as the word called neuroplasticity. It's the brain's ability to recover. That's the reason why they have speech therapy. That's the reason why they have physical therapists after you go through a neurological trans setback and because they rely if you practice it every week. Yeah. Well, you, you, you learn how to move your leg again. Y'all gonna talk to me. If you see, but you can't, you can't get practicing every now and then. Everyone, you can't pick up your Bible every now and then. You want to grow in God, but you don't practice studying His Word regular enough. You need Him to feed you every day. You need to wake up with Jesus on your mind. You, you need to go to sleep with Him on your mind. You, you will quit having those nightmares. Dreamed about the ceiling reaching down, grabbing you. <laughs> Touch somebody and tell your neighbor, say, I'm wired for the new year. I'm wired. <laughs> and then, <clears throat> and then last week, which was week number three, we talked about prioritizing your new year. We talked about the prodigal son. How he had everything at his fingertips. He didn't know how to prioritize. He took what he had. He wasted it trying to have some fun. And I, I just want to encourage somebody. Listen, <clears throat> you done already lost some good stuff doing foolishness. Don't do the same thing in 2016. Hello, somebody. You, you, you know, as long let's see, because somebody, as soon as you get your tax return check, people go flood your house. Your phone gonna be jumping off the hook, but as soon as your money is gone. You need to prioritize your new year. You had three disconnects this year. You don't need to take your money and leave it at late tomorrow. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. You need to prioritize. Y'all gotta help me right quick. I'm talking to those of you who determined to make this year better than last year. I'm talking about those of you who are determined that I want everything that God has for me. I want to show the Lord, Lord, I can be a good steward. Touch your neighbor right quick and tell your neighbor, say, this is my year, this is my year. Today we're going to attempt to further that discussion by talking about you, your culture and your new year. Somebody say my culture. I want you to understand what your culture is. Your culture is the integrated pattern of what you know, what you believe, and how you respond. Let me say that again. It's so we can say again, your, your culture is the mix, the combination of what you know, then what you believe, and how you respond to it. You know, you're up here to saying that we are the product of our environment. We're the product of our environment. We learn from what we are used to, what we see, what we're introduced to. I saw something that that looked like a joke. Some people were laughing at it, but it's, it, it caught my mind how they were showing a little boy about seven or eight years old on YouTube smoking weed. Smoking weed. They were showing it on the news. And listen, and I'm talking about, and listen, and watch this. He didn't go and buy it himself. Talking about give me a blunt. Somebody had to introduce him to that. Now watch this now. Now, now, now the very one that introduced him to that, don't be, don't be a, don't act like you're startled when he turned out to be a drug addict. Because watch this. I want to have us right here. I want to have us right here. It's because your culture will determine, it will determine your outcome. 
I want to help you right now. I want to help you because the Bible said, watch this. In the book of in the book of Psalms, chapter number one, you can jot it down. I'm not going to move quickly here. Psalm chapter number one, it said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now watch this here, here. He's talking about culture. He's talking about environment. Because what you hear is going to play a role in what you start to believe. It's going, it's going to play a role in what you start to believe. And so what you start to believe is going to dictate your behavior. Now why did somebody can come to you and tell you, say, Sister so-and-so said this about you. At first you you said, no, nah, because the person who tells you, you know they always tell the lie. <laughs> so you're going you're to, but then they're going to say something, and they're going to be like, huh, that sort of sound. And you're going to start to believe it. And next time you see sister so and so, you're going to roll your eyes. Because of what somebody done told you. Well, and the person you roll your eyes, they, don't even, they haven't even heard nothing about it. But watch this, what you start to believe. It changed your behavior. You ever found folk who, listen, you used to could talk to her, you used to catch her on the phone anytime, but now you don't ever get a phone call. It don't take a rocket scientist. You don't need to be a psychiatrist to know when people's behavior has changed. You don't need a you don't need a you don't need a degree in counseling and, and clinical psychology to understand when people behavior has changed. You know when their behavior has changed. And if you trace it back, it goes on because it goes in three stages. Stage number one is the knowledge. The knowledge is the information that enters into our system. She understands. See, that's why I want I want to share this with you because it's important that you set your New Year on the right course to get your culture right so you can be productive. Because watch this. Understand, Jesus said, He said, My people perish for the lack of knowledge. So you 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 need to make sure that your knowledge is the correct knowledge. Hello, somebody. If you're trying to grow in Christ, you want knowledge that's going to contribute to your growth. Hello, somebody. Because watch this. Your knowledge is your is the facts or the information that you that you receive pertaining to a particular topic. Listen, that reason why I don't want to, that reason why you have to be careful who when you allow people who have no faith to tell you how to believe in God. Child, I wouldn't be giving that much money to the church. That be my, listen, that be why you're not a giver. Hello, somebody. And you have to understand, you cannot let non church go advise you about church stuff. Now, listen, I want to say that I know you love your husband. I know you love your wife. But they haven't been to church in two or three years. I don't care how much you love them. They cannot give you positive advice on church matters. Ain't no need to talk to your best sister who ain't been going to church for five years about church stuff. All you gonna do is empower what she already believes. They ain't no good anyhow. But in order to in order to shape your culture, you need correct knowledge. How you gonna get knowledge? You gotta get involved in what the information is flowing. You gotta get involved in Bible study. You gotta get involved in Sunday school. You gotta get involved in the things where the word of God is flowing. You gotta get involved in the part of God's word when we listen, when we are removed from the praise and we're into the study of it. To where we can understand what it's all about, then it gives more power to our praise. Hello, somebody. See, because watch this. If a person don't understand what direct deposit is, and they get a slip in the mail, and, 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 and they say, you've been paying this, and they don't have no check, because they're going to lose their money. Child, what about checking? And they're going to be wondering, where is the check? They're going to be like, direct deposit. What is direct deposit? That means it's already in your account. But if you know what direct deposit is, you get that slip, you're already going to be satisfied. Because if you have the knowledge, it puts you in a position to utilize that knowledge.
Because watch this. If you look in the text, I want you to see it. This woman in St. John chapter number 4, she didn't have correct knowledge. And it affected her life. It affected her life. And I want to help somebody here today because as a good post clothing of this of the first month of this year, I want to help you understand that you, that, that's the that reason why in scholarly papers, in writings in college, they don't, they don't allow you to just Google and put any information in college scholar papers. You know why? Because they said anybody can put that stuff on the internet. They don't want you, they don't want you putting information that is just based on somebody's opinion. They want to be based on some facts. And you need your faith grounded in some facts. You need to know that if I call on the Lord, he will answer. You need to understand that they that wait up on the Lord, you need to know what that means. It don't mean to go and pull out your losing. It, it means to learn how to hold your peace and let God fight your battle. This woman didn't have the correct knowledge because look at this. Verse number seven, when Jesus went to Samaria, he had said verse number seven, there comes the woman of Samaria to draw water from this well. And Jesus said to her, Give me some, give me the drink. Give me the drink. And the first thing she went to say, listen, how you going to ask me for something to drink? How you going to ask me for something to drink? Do you understand? You a Jew. Look at verse number nine. She said, you a Jew. We don't have no interaction with you. She didn't have correct knowledge. Because Jesus explained to her, if you had only known who it was, that was asking you for water, you will be trying to get water for me. See, sometimes we can miss out on what God has for us simply because we don't know how close to a blessing we really are. God trying to bless you and you keep messing it up. Every time God want to take you higher, your old attitude show up again. Every time God want to do a new thing in your life, the same old mouth, that same old filthy mouth show up again. And you corrupt all that that God has done and it put you in a process when you got to start this cycle all But how many of you have a made up mind that said, I, I, I want to set the right culture for my new year? You got to have the correct knowledge. Watch this. See, because knowledge becomes the foundation of our beliefs. See, we can understand. He said we perish for the lack of knowledge. And understand that whatever you, whatever knowledge you have will determine what you believe. Yeah, yeah. What knowledge you have will determine what you believe. If you have a broad knowledge of cooking, then you have a strong belief system concerning the things you know how to cook. Whatever knowledge you have, it will determine what you believe. Somebody said, thank God for good knowledge. See, we're going to watch this in Mark chapter number 6, verse number 6. I want you to see this. Mark it in your Bible. Jesus said, listen, he marveled because of their unbelief. There's certain things that could not be done because their beliefs were not in place. So we, in order to set your culture right, you got to have the right knowledge, then you got to believe the right stuff. Hello, somebody. You, you got to believe the right stuff. That's why it takes the right knowledge and you study God's word, then it empowers your belief. So how many thank God that you've learned how to trust him through his word? How many thank God that through his word you done learned that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning? People wonder, girl, how can you how can you press your way through all that stuff you're going to? Because I believe something that your eyes can't see. Your hands may not can touch it, but I know that God didn't bring me this far to leave me. Touch somebody right quick and tell them that he didn't bring me. He didn't bring me this far. He didn't bring me this far to leave me. Don't push me. Don't push me. We're going to open the door of the church in just a minute, but I want you to see this. Because watch this. If you give a person <clears throat> the proper knowledge, the correct facts, and then they impart that and create a belief system of those correct facts, those facts are supposed to help build what we call our values. See, because after you learn new knowledge, you start 
taught to value new things. See, whereas without the correct knowledge, you wanted to get even, but with new knowledge now, you know now I value holding my peace and let God fight my battle. See, because how many thank God that through knowledge of his word, you have grown? Now, I'm not saying you all that you're going to be, but how many thank God that you done grown through new knowledge of his word? People think that all you do is clap your hand and tell them, I got some word in me. Yeah, I did, but I got some word in me. Because guess what? I've learned how to deal with people like you. But you ain't going to say nothing. Look at your neighbor right quick and say, neighbor, I got some word in me. I got some word. Don't let, don't, don't let this fool you. Don't let this makeup fool you. Don't let this new trend fool you. Because guess what? I got some word in me. People want a girl, listen, you she been through all that stuff. How's she holding up? Because I got some word in me. I got some word in me. Don't, 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 don't ever think that. Don't ever think that you can do. See, that's really why people hating on you because they don't they don't like you. And you wonder why in the world don't she like me? What, what have I done to her? People trying to envy you about something, but what they don't realize, it's just a God in me. Y'all got to help me right quick. You know that ex that thought you couldn't bounce back after they walked out of your life. You need to tell them, it's just a God in me. People wonder, how you going to make it tell them, it's just a God in me. It's the God in me. How you going to handle that sickness? Say, it's only temporary, but the God in me is going to bring me through this. Because I know that weeping may endure for a night. Listen, watch this. Now watch it. I want you to see in the lesson because the woman said that then I promise you we're going to get ready to go. We're going to get ready to go. But look at verse number 19. After the woman had experienced Jesus. Oh my goodness. Her old culture started to fade out. Because he began to deal with her in a way that psychiatrists couldn't do. He began to deal with her about things that no other people could do. And the woman said, watch it in verse number 19. She said, I perceive that you are a prophet. Because now I got some new information. Now I believe different. I can see some things different. You'll be surprised to what one word can do to your whole life. You can walk in church feeling down and out and one word will lift you up out of your heart. David said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he lifted me up out of a horrible pit. Did the anybody thank God for his word on today? Touch him out one more time and tell him that I thank God for his word. I thank him. The woman got a new belief system. And I believe that many of us are only a prayer away. Yeah. I believe many of us are on the verge of experiencing an overflow. Uh -huh. I believe that many of us are on the verge of getting out of the boat and learning how to walk on water. Yeah. But all you got to do now is begin to believe what you already know. Yeah. What you mean by preacher? Believing that means to take God at his word. Yes, you already heard that he said, do unto others and you will have them to do unto you. Yes. Now if you really believe it, the last thing is, it becomes your behavior. Can I get a witness? Because whenever you have knowledge about something, it's all right. That knowledge, it becomes your Say, watch this. That same knowledge become your belief system. Ain't God all right? And if you really believe it enough, after a while, you begin to walk it out. It become your behavior. Because the woman, after she realized that she was an ordinary man, she said, I perceive that you are Ain't Lord. And after a while, her life began to change. Ain't Lord. Because here what she did. She left her water pot at the well. And we're telling everybody, come see me. Who done told me all about my messed up life. Ain't Lord. 
Thank you for visiting with New Mount Zion. We hope this message has been a blessing to you and that you join us again next week. You may also join us every Sunday at 1045 a.m. for our morning worship service under the direction of Pastor Alan Ray Bolton. New Mount Zion is located at 2117 Baker Street in Muskegon Heights. Our mission is to bring persons into a saving and redemptive relationship with Jesus Christ. We are a spiritual body whose only foundation is the Word of God. We fulfill our ministry as we preach and teach, pray and empower, forgive and reconcile. If you would like to learn more about our ministry, please call 231-726-2948. May God be a blessing to you and your family.